Hello, everyone, and welcome. <laughs> what? That was a good intro. Oh, and welcome back to another episode of Legends Only. My name is T. Kyle. And I'm Bradley. And this, <laughs> God, this is your weekly pop culture podcast where, why are we giggling? I don't know. We talk about <laughs> Legends Only. We're back. We're back. We're unwell. We're back for the main girls. That's right. The Patreon girls got a taste of us. Well, what? got to listen to us last week. The, well, yes. I'm sure some of them got a taste. <laughs> <laughs> I, I paused. You know what? We went on a road trip. You went I on a physical did. road trip. We went on a metaphorical road trip. Yeah. A load trip, as some of you who know, those who know. Yeah, the girls on Patreon, they get it, get it. Where we take a fun little ride, throw the rats in the car, mm-hmm. and drive somewhere with thematic songs. Yeah, thematic curations. Thematica, the new album. <laughs> <laughs> By Joanne. By Joanne. We're back and settling in after a long evening. Yes, we had the Kylie party last night. Yeah, you might hear it in our voices. Shout or out. Certainly mine. Yeah, I'm also dealing with a tooth issue. As it am is I. It is now, yeah. <laughs> Both I have caught the tooth problem. <laughs> so sorry. Um, so we're going to have to have a little surgery myself. <laughs> Toothless, not podcastless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if I have a even more of a lisp with certain words than I normally do, I don't want to hear it, okay? <laughs> Reddit is going to go up about this yeah. one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway. Yeah. We did have the Kylie party last night. <laughs> Shout out to... <laughs> what? Pray for our mouths. <laughs> <sighs> Literally. It is kind of ironic because you just gifted me with uh, the viewers, listeners can't see it, but a giant tooth. Oh, yeah, a shark tooth. There's a giant shark tooth next to me. Yeah. Bet you could use that right now. I need it. (laughs) Well, and uh, I also need a root canal, so we're just slaying (laughs) our joint slay. Maximize our joint dental insurance slay, maybe. Yeah, next week we're going to be like, hello, everyone, (laughs) and welcome back to the episode of... (laughs) <laughs> molars only oh god so sorry enough tooth talk yeah <laughs> talk that talk anyway yes we did have the kylie party last night we did thank you everybody who came out we yeah. had such a fun time the I, girls came out i don't stay out that long these days no roll swap roll swap because usually once you're out you're out yeah i can rally normally till the sunrise and uh, I I was the one this time. Mm-hmm. Kylie called and I answered. I was out late. And we will talk about it more in detail in the after show. Yeah. But shout out to John Ali. Honestly. We need to give a huge shout out to John. The master of ceremonies himself. Also was shook when we heard his voice and like couldn't see him. And then he was on stage. Mm-hmm. That was gooped the girls. Yeah. Yeah. Did amazing improving that. You shaded know. Olivia Rodrigo. Shaded Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> the crowd kind of cheered. <laughs> All of us with our canes. <laughs> like, yeah, get her. <laughs> yes, uh, we had three great performances and an album playback. And I'll, we'll talk about it more in the after show. But thank you, John Ali, for making it all happen. We had a great time. And $3 bill. Yeah, and thank you to the girls who showed up. Yeah. And said hi. Yes, many uh, low fans mm-hmm. said hello. It, was it gave me cool. inspiration. What kind of inspiration? Like a low ball. Because the disco ball in like, the <laughs> middle, it was like a circle. Low ball is a really funny idea for the name of the party. <gasps> oh, it's like low, low balling. Wait, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, that's a concept. Yeah, it's like basically like a little mini club renaissance. Yeah, or a chromatica ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Since we didn't get to go. <sighs> We can also have our own brutal museum. Museum of Brutality. Oh my god. <laughs> Save that for the back. Some Dark y'all. room. <laughs> I've heard things. Mm. Also, Roz was there. Yes, certainly. We'll talk more about it later. What else? Oh, I tried the House of Love cocktail. I'll give my review of that. Rupal. Rupal should be arrested. <laughs> <laughs> also, I would like to shout out Lemon Chiffon mm-hmm. for playing that oldie which I thought was off tension. Anyway, I'll explain later. I may or may not have pulled out Shazam on the dance floor. 
And you I did. just got introduced to a 20 year old Kylie track that is a fucking bop. Mm-hmm. Better late than never, as mm-hmm. they say. You're on a ro- you should honestly make a playlist of like bops you discovered, like Little Mix. <laughs> um, what was the one? Little Mix. Caught in 4K <laughs> at the club. <laughs> it's yeah. all the songs that I'm busted. It's just a, mo- uh, uh, a montage of pictures of you shazamming at the club. It works. It does. Anywho. Anywho, late breaking news. As a result of the Kylie party, we pushed back our recording, yeah. which actually allowed us to possibly get some breaking news in. It, I Yeah, I was able to catch up a little bit and some breaking news actually happened. Right. And, and we should say, for the girls who don't know, that you were away for the whole week. Yeah, I was gone for a full week. And you disconnected. Disconnected, broken up again. Anyway, as a result, your field of vision of pop culture is especially narrow this week. Oh, it's yeah, I need to She didn't explain. let the news infiltrate the the main sky. No. Yeah. In some places literally no service. Yeah. No connection. No gaze. No. <laughs> I was like white knuckling. I was like, I Kevin. need a gay. <laughs> one of the servers at one of the restaurants we went to, though, was a gay. And I was like, oh, finally. Serving. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Uh, well, like pumpkin ale for you. <laughs> yes, please. Close enough. Can you sing Rush? <laughs> anyway. We do have I'll some... get more on that yeah, later. We'll, we'll after show. This is just the whole podcast. is just like, listen to the after show. Yeah. Well, no. <laughs> We're getting recalibrated. We are greasing the wheels. In the meantime, we have some late breaking news. Morning, morning breaking news. Bright and early on a Sunday. I feel yeah, like I feel like they knew that it was going to be silent when the news yeah, broke. I oh. ever. <laughs> well, you needed gays, and we're not getting gays this time. Super Bowl. What was that? Twenty twenty four halftime show starring Usher. <laughs> now, let me ask you: Is this triggering? No. Okay. For My the- first thought was. <laughs> Like Scream by Usher. Oh my God. If I forgot you about know, that. No, you know. <laughs> oh my God. X Factor. Yeah, X Factor 2012. That Brittany. brings me back. Well, I'm not disappointed. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And it is interesting that it's just one person. We are talking, of course, about Usher being announced as the Super Bowl halftime show performer. Just him, as far as we know. There will be guests. Or maybe not. Or maybe not. Rihanna changed uh, the game with that. That's true. That's true. But I I asked if it was triggering because I'm sure that the the low stands may know that that there's a certain memory attached to, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. By Usher for T. Kyle. And he will undoubtedly do, yeah. Well, duh. It's a fucking bop. Yeah, that'll be a moment, actually. And then I got to thinking, there'll be many bops. Yeah, Oh my There's a God. lot of bops. You know? Love in this club. I really want Climax. Well, see, I have a memory with Yeah, but one of my friends has a memory with Love in this club. So <laughs> I feel <laughs> like both of us are going to be going through it. A lot of the listening audience may have a lot of memories with yeah. Usher because he soundtracked a lot of nights out. Yeah. And if you don't know what we're talking about, yes, so the context is again, key. I got f- in the back of a car to Yeah by Usher. <laughs> playing on the fucking radio and honestly in hindsight i would do it again i <laughs> not that flexible yeah. anymore yeah i would do it again <laughs> so whatever that's why you're in physical therapy <laughs> <laughs> oh so what brings you in today smacked my no, head against the just... surfboard <laughs> <laughs> there was a surfboard involved uh, i used to be fun okay <sighs> Those were the days it's when I used to be young. <laughs> we've got yeah, we've got OMG, oh my god, mm-hmm. like that goes off. My boo, DJ got us falling in love, loving this club. You got it bad, burn. There's a lot. Don't look down mm. with Martin Garrix. There you go. I'm ready for it. I'm excited for it. I can't hate it. No, I don't hate it at all. And I know that there was this Vegas residency that happened fairly recently with Usher, I feel, maybe Mm pre-pandemic. I don't know. I think he's perfectly suited for it. Brings out Kiki Palmer. He could bring out Kiki. He could bring out Cece. Ooh. Definitely. Lil Jon. There's plenty of people. Martin Garrix. Martin Garrix. Don't look down. 
I think this will be one of those millennial nostalgia performances that'll really get everybody moving. Mm -hmm. Like when they had the eight people, what was it? Like Eminem, Mary Mary J. J. That ended up feeling like your middle school dance. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. So I think this will be fun again. I'm not mad. I, I, we all said it. We felt the energy was male this year. We felt mm-hmm. like they were going to go that way. Despite the um, insiders tweeting that it was going to be sync and Destiny's Child and all of those fucking rumors that I... Think- yeah, no. Beyonce's busy with Renaissance. She is. She doesn't need the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl needs her. Uh, true. Exactly. So we'll have to wait and see February 2024. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, speaking of uh, last year's, oh my god, I'm gonna come out with a remix of it now. You should I'm have that squeaky sound of like a uh, the the chair going forward and back, <laughs> or the shower cleaner. Did you see that? <laughs> yes, wasn't yeah, that yeah. a TikTok where it was yeah, the... cleaning the the mirror? You guys wait. I'm gonna come out with a fucking fire ass bop of yeah by February. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll find another surfboard. I don't know. Anyway, speaking of last year's performer, we got a Rihanna announcement this week, too. We did. Or a reveal. Yeah, I don't know if it's an a- just a reveal. A reveal. Reveal. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not an album. No. <laughs> but it could mean that we're one step closer, but we've been saying that for <laughs> years now. I don't know if we're one step closer. I think we are in our baby era. Yeah. Early. And we're not talking birthing R9. I have a feeling that R9 is done. Maybe. And she's just like, no. Yeah, I'm pregnant. Pregnant with LG6. <laughs> Still one of my favorite Gaga tweets. No, we birthed instead some Bobby photos. We have Riza and Riot. The twosome isn't seen often, but they're finally here in all their glory. These baby photos with ASAP, they basically took like paparazzi style photos but also like very cute indoor photos together with the little babies. It's a vibe. It is a vibe. Are they wearing Fenty baby? Definitely. I'm sure. But the pictures are really cute. And I honestly, it reminds me of when she did the baby bump reveal and they were Mm -hmm. like fake paparazzi photos there too. I like that aesthetic. It's like, Oh, you, you caught me candidly out with, with the kids. It's cool. It's like, I don't know. It's casual. Yeah. It's cool. It's her. Yes, totally. Like, so, Rihanna gives you high fashion when she's just standing on the sidewalk. Right. She does. Yeah, so we got to see a little sneak peek of the babies who don't appear too often on her social media. No. Just ads for Fenty of all sorts. At what age do you think he'll understand that he was, like, part of the Super Bowl? Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, it's probably a good decade. Yeah. That's such a good question. I don't know when you'd become conscious that you were doing the rude boy choreo. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> wow. What an honor. I was shaken. I was sh- yeah. <laughs> uh, we also have another update from a conversation that we had two weeks ago. There was some manifesting. Regarding Joe Jonas yeah. and Sophie. Oh, yeah. Things, we um, had escalated. discussed the possibility of Taylor getting involved and i was like no she's busy (laughs) she's on tour she's booked Mm. she's fine she's dealing with 1989 revealing all 80 covers Mm -mm. she's not gonna dip her toe in drama again oh no 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 (laughs) she's a mastermind she knew exactly what she was doing yes while you were gone sophie turner stepped out in the city with taylor swift Mm -hmm. and uh we can only imagine what they were discussing. Get a good lawyer. Probably. She was consulting because the pretty much the day after that conversation, she dropped her own legal documents. Yeah. A thorough dragging. And it's getting ugly now. It is. It I is, hate and it. And I hate that. Yeah. Well, it started off on the wrong foot and she weighed it. Honestly, she's playing it perfectly. Didn't say shit except for the joint statement allegedly his like PR mountain onslaught of like bad mother partying, drinking, whatever. She doesn't say shit. And then she just files his paperwork. That's just like, boom, here's exactly where the kids were. Here's blah, 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 blah. She kind of, and then stepped out with Taylor and then stepped out with Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. Eating him up. I know. Eek. 
Well, <sighs> happiness <laughs> begins and sometimes it ends. I know this must feel very awkward for you. Um, sort of, but like I also don't care. Okay. You know what I mean? That's a safe space to be in. Yeah. We're down with parasocial relationships. Right. Like nothing can take away the experience that I had at the Happiness Begins tour before the pandemic. Uh-huh. So like, you know, I'm not like rooting against anyone. Right. Yeah. So I just hope that they can like, I just want everyone to find peace. I agree. You know, especially yeah. after this past week, <sighs> being in nature. <laughs> you I'm are like, very I just want now. peace. Yeah. You know? You don't want 33 million puzzles to solve on Google? No, what's that about? So while you were gone, Taylor unleashed a um, domestic oh, terrorist attack the, by... <laughs> yes. <laughs> the 3D letters. I did see that. Yes. She, Something about it's spelling slut. Yes. So she started to unveil the track listing of 1989 Taylor's version. We already have that, that, don't we? Now. But because each reissue comes with new songs. Oh, the vault. These are the vault songs. Got it. So in order to unleash, unlock them, you had to, 33 million people had to unlock puzzles. Like you would search Taylor Swift 1989 Taylor's version and you'd get your first sort of word puzzle. Was this the thing that looked like Scrabble? Mm -hmm. That was real? Yes. Oh. And then you'd search the word that you found on Google and it would give you the next word association puzzle whatever and until 33 million people did it or, or pe 33 million puzzles were solved that's when she gave up which were one only, song <laughs> yeah basically she gave four songs and then she saved the best for last which was slut uh, yes so uh, is that the song title yes oh i know i hope I, it's electronic as so many people Featuring tweeted Slater. thank god she's a pop star and not a serial killer because <laughs> Da Vinci Code. Zodiac Killer is shaking. Like, this is some sick shit. She's she's a, a sick and twisted individual. Aren't we all? <laughs> and they noticed that the key for the vault is the shape of the era's tour stage. It was the sh exact shape of the layout. Oh, that's kind of cool, though. That's cute. I mean, it's what? A fucking rectangle with a square on it? Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like... But... We have songs, including one that we will be, unfortunately, taking her to court for. Oh, no. Called Suburban Legends. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me last week. <laughs> Legends only the tree pain. <laughs> <laughs> See you all in court. Congratulations to the Swifties for unlocking slut! Exclamation mark. That is a surprising title for 1989 Taylor, I will say, that she wrote a song called Slut at that time. I could see it now, maybe. Have to see how that sounds. Suburban Legends. The other ones are called Say, Say, Don't Go. <laughs> <laughs> now That We Don't Talk, which is uh, sounds like We Don't Talk Anymore by Charlie Puth and Selena <laughs> Gomez. And Is It Over Now, which is it's just- It's never a, over with her. <laughs> it's never really over. Just because it's over doesn't mean it's really over. Bop. Yeah. <gasps> Wait. Can we talk about that video of Katy Perry that's going around? I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like where first of all, where is that from? Why now? Harley's in Hawaii has gone the distance <laughs> lately for some reason. For first of all, there's some very funny memes on TikTok, just like, what are the oh my god. They they keep changing it actually, but the you and I part of Harley's in Hawaii. They keep changing like... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but they've also found her bathroom. What was she calling it? Like the potty series or something? I forget, but this is a while back and it's resurfaced right. this video of Katy Perry singing <laughs> in a bathroom. Uh, the small talk potty jams. Got it. Uh, potty jams is it, yes. Uh, and so her performance of... Harley's in Hawaii and, and the caption is just I'm sorry but why is this so bad <laughs> find the note find the note <laughs> she was going and all the quote tweets were like imagine standing outside waiting <laughs> to piss <laughs> hearing this you're just trying to like sneak in a fart <laughs> like, you're, just, you're like <laughs> What a wild time. Justice for Harley. Harley's in Hawaii. Like, it really goes... You know who wrote that? 
Who? Mr. Pooth. Oh. Mr. Pooth. I'm ready to start the justice for Katy Perry campaign. Not like she needs it, but like. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for the bathroom sessions? No. Like, oh. she has so many bops. We need to talk about Smile. It gets oh. so much shit. Harley's and Hawaii's gets like flopped, but it's such a bop. Yeah. Yeah. Underrated gems. Oh. Teary Eyes needs to chart, is what I'm getting at. Well, we didn't, we missed this in our hiatus, knee, but w- she sold her catalog. Yeah. For 200 or some, 50 million or something like that. So I don't know who owns that now, but you're probably going to hear Harley's and Why and pay less commercials. And As things. people should. Yep. I think. Yep. So uh, she Chain made to a the rhythm. fat check and we'll see what she does with that. More she's shoes. Set. She's got Desoy or she's whatever. Do more shoes. Another season of Idol. She's yeah. set. She is set. The nuns better watch out. One of out. the greatest halftime performances of all time. I said it. Is is Madonna. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, what were we talking about? Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift. Fearless. Um. God, I have that audio in my head. I feel like Slut is going to be a... What's it called when there's like letters that mean things like acronym? Yeah. It could be. It could be very me. Mm-hmm. Or like if you see gay me. Oh. You know, like there's going to be yeah. a twist to it. It's, I think it's going to be very much like you say that I'm a slut, but, 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 <laughs> but I'm not. not. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's going to be that because that was Maybe truly. Be like, I am. <laughs> but I'd be like, yeah. Yes. Finally, a song I can relate to. I. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be because that was truly the peak of she was tired of people saying that all her music is just about ex-boyfriends or ex-flings or whatever. And so that she's being perceived as like a slut. I feel that's probably where it's at, but I have no idea. Or she's calling somebody a slut, which would be iconic to make up for changing the lyrics to that one about lying on your back on the speak now reissue. She should just double down into a slut shaming anthem like like pink. Oh, you're nothing but a hooker. <laughs> I wish I could lie on my back. <laughs> like, pay my rent at not this point. Not since the surfboard. <laughs> anyway. Well, anyway. Not that way anymore. Shout out to the slutty Swifties. This is your time to shine. I'm so ready for 1989. Well, it's going to be fall. It's like 1989 season. Yeah. Blackout season. Mm-hmm. In the zone season. The girls, they get it, get it. That's right. And body language season. Kylie's body language is turning 20 and it's going to get a vinyl reissue word on the street. And she's already started doing merch for it at that tension pop-up shop, which actually is a nice segue to the next section. You know, there was a lot that happened while you were gone. Uh, Another fashion week happened. Another fashion week happened. I saw, like I talked about this weeks ago. I'm like, it's always fashion week. Yes, you're right. Another fashion week happened. You, the point has been proven. Milan Fashion yeah, Week. It's fashion year season. Kendall touched down with Bad Bunny. Good for her. Kylie sat with Rosalia. Kylie Jenner, to be clear. But Kylie Minogue was there too. Kim Kardashian debuted in American Horror oh, Story. She Delicate. sure did. did. They named that after the Taylor Swift song. Oh, I never thought about that. Yeah, like the, the dots are all connecting in they weird are. ways. Oh, wow. Kylie, Delicate, Kit. I don't even know. Well, speaking of uh, tying, sewing together loose threads. Oh, wow. Look (laughs) at that. I think it's time for a segment we like to call High Fashion. (laughs) So editorial. Guys, this is awesome. This is a billboard. This is super high fashion. Oh, my God. That's so high fashion. So high fashion. My biases are well known. My. (laughs) It's a Kylie centric week for me. It's attention week. It's Kylie release week is big. And obviously there's a lot that has come out for Miss Kylie. And the promo's been really good. Yeah. It's been global. It's been pop-up shops. We didn't actually, this counts because I did, I wanted a slow towel. She has for this weekend, she has a pop-up shop in London. The Padam Padam boots are on display. The red chair and you can buy the vinyl of Tension, um, a slow towel, like from the slow music video. Uh, there's shirts for body language. Got one of those. A bunch of stuff. Padam candles. Tension Ooh. candles. 
Are they red? Yes. Oh, I know. Branding. Branding. Yeah. Padam slippers. Mm. There was a ton of stuff available. Uh, a few. I there were a few low listeners who were there. Picked up some merch there. I saw the Padam necklace. Oh, I didn't see that. And then there was lithographs, which I really wanted. She had signed gorgeous photos. Oh, what's a lithograph? It's like a print of of a of a photo, and it's like usually like signed and limited. Um, oh, NFT. NFT, but in the flesh. But they sold out immediately of the one I wanted of her with the Kawasaki motorcycle. Anyway, there was that. There was also a Vogue Australia cover that said Kylie Forever. It's so good. It's so good. Very like natural at home vibes, but still high fashion. Yeah, like I casually slay. A casual slay. She's done a ton of press and that was probably my favorite. And then of course I got the Tension vinyl in the mail on the day of the release and the shoot inside like she didn't even release all those photos yet she's got a short haircut serve she's got this cool high fashiony look with i don't know a corset name's kylie now i'm giving you bob <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh very pleased all around and we will be getting into the album of course later on yeah but she's not the only gor- girl in the world serving. No, oh my fucking god, we need to have this conversation. We do. Megan the Stallion mm-hmm. canceled on Global Citizens <laughs> Fest, which good for her because it fucking rained. It was miserable. Yeah, and it happens every year, so you can do it next year. Yeah. Renaissance is a once in a lifetime experience. Uh-huh. She canceled on Global Citizens Fest and performed <laughs> Savage with Beyonce in Houston at the Renaissance World Tour in this skin tight cat suit camo body suit the army if they slayed mm-hmm. Kavant. it is so fucking good it's the the military tweet that's like when did you last serve oh, and everyone's yeah, like, like, like i don't know ask her how did you serve yeah. like your country and it's <laughs> yeah. like but there's like cutouts yeah. on like the side and it's like laced up but it's see-through and you see her thong and the, oh my fucking god well in general that show was on par with her birthday show mm-hmm it was Houston, H Town. It was very excitable because all of a sudden they were handing out light wrist things. There were cameras. It's about time. I there wanted were, a Renaissance wristband so bad. There were yeah, so it lit up with the music and there were allegedly cameras for filming. Who knows we'll see if we'll see it. Yeah, I have a theory about that. She also she sh- she should go to prison for this. She debuted new merch did you see this no it says you are the visual baby she's teasing the film she is a menace and i can't get enough of it i want more of it keep menacing me (laughs) she uh she knows what she's doing yeah can i tell the listener something i think i told you this yeah i am a different human being after seeing renaissance yeah i think we said that everything is just uh, I'm seeing everything through a different lens. Yeah. Now. Rose Colored Glasses by oh. Kelly Rowland. She was in Houston. Kelly, Michelle, Latoya, and Latavia, mm-hmm. apparently. Uh, I I mean, clearly a missed opportunity not to have a moment on stage, but still iconic that they were there. I do think it would end me if five of them, for the first time, I think, ever, were just like all there. Standing, doing, I don't know, bills, 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 or something really old school. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. But very iconic that they were there. We're getting closer to whatever this Destiny's Child moment might possibly happen. Yeah. Now that we, it feels like everyone's on like good the terms. Same, good terms. Yeah. Same page. Except for That's Farif- what I want in the world. And just then everyone. for Farif- like <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. She blocked me. Yeah, so I do feel like that still. is. <laughs> taken into consideration so yeah i feel like we're getting really close because my theory is the wristbands went out because they reviewed footage of the crowd and they're like mm, that looks kind of empty let's give them wristbands do you think yeah interesting i don't know like a nice drone shot of like the uh lights matching with like a beat you know yeah huh that's Maybe. my theory we'll see if it comes true yeah well we'll get something yeah and I don't know if it's going to be the visuals mixed with tour footage. I don't know if it's going to be just the tour. I don't know if it's going to be a documentary about all the above. But we'll get something. I've already said what I want from you, Beyonce. <laughs> did I think I did, right? Yes. Yeah, I want every show on streaming. Yeah, is that so hard to ask? 
Well, she can make it happen. Exactly. If anyone's going to do it, right? it's her. And she always finds a way to like outslay herself. It's true. Just when you think like, oh, this is the best it's ever going to get. Mm-hmm. Then like Renaissance tour happens. Right. And it's like, how is she going to top that? Mm-hmm. And she will. Yes. Well. Yeah. Yeah. And that other, that black outfit with the, um, it almost looks like shin pads that kind of went up. Oh, yeah. Oh. <sighs> That was good too. Mm-hmm. That's the other thing. It's just like how many fucking outfits, and they're all good. Yeah. I mean, we've had a few misses. That's it's impossible to go through a whole tour with artist only subjective. Hits. Artist subjective. Some people thought the condom hat was a sleigh. I was one of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was uh, all the fashion in the world. Mm-hmm. Uh, you. Oh wait, I actually have another fashion note, kind of connected to Beyonce. Oh. Brandon Blackwood, the designer. Mm-hmm. Beyonce has his bags. Yeah. I also want one of the bags. I have it like eyed on my list for like I get like a job, you know? Yep. Um, I want the little silver uh mini. Taylor Swift stepped out with one. Oh. Yeah, she must have been inspired seeing Beyonce's Instagram. Clearly. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that is like an like look at me with the fashion news here. I, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now that fucking Taylor Swift had one, the prices are probably going to skyrocket now. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I will say Taylor looked very good. She also did an outing with Greta Gerwig, the Barbie director. And who else was there? Zoe Kravitz. And I think Laura Dern. Am I making that up? It was like this cra- crazy squad. I believe it. And she looked really good. I think I just made up Laura. No, I was right. It's Laura Dern. I you might have missed this one, this outing. I started following her stylist on Instagram. Taylor's. I'm a fashion girl now. Look at that. Oh wow. Um, well, this is from the side, but like she's been doing some good. Oh my god, fall. I love that coat. Yeah, I love a coat. I love a jacket. I will have to soon because it is getting cold. It's literally Britney's impact from Onyx Hotel with the the coat with mm-hmm. like the underwear underneath. Trench coat. And like that underwear. is a sleigh. Yeah. That's my ideal outfit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is every fashionable thing that has happened. Yeah. You're going to have to give us grace on this episode as well, because when we take like a week off and then another week off, there's too much content. So we just cover what we saw. saw. And in your case, it was rocks and the sea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and trees and hiking. And we, I don't feel like like right forcing you to do your homework about everything in pop culture that you missed. No. Well, it's also important to disconnect. It is. You know what I mean? And I actually did stick to it, which was good by Marina. Yeah. Formerly of the diamonds. I will say though, what was interesting about being kind of disconnected is like, Mm -hmm. you see what bubbles up to the top of kind of like local worlds. (laughs) Oh yes. You were telling me about this, your findings. Yeah. I'll, you have Should boot, I reveal my findings? Boots on the ground yeah, discovery. Yeah, boots on the local ground yeah. of what has bubbled up, which I was stunned by. Yeah. So I was I was doing research. Yeah. How about that? You were. Yeah. I think some of you will be very surprised at my findings, because I was surprised. Pen and paper out, out at, in the land. Yeah. Observing. I have updates. I was doing research, mm-hmm. sent a report into Homeland Security. You guys want that story? You got the scoop on the community. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally Lady Gaga looking for evidence of the insurrection. <laughs> you are. <laughs> anyway, new music. Yeah, there's some new music out to say the very least. And I'll also just say, I did not d- dive into everything that is available. And I don't feel right commenting on the albums that I've only like skimmed. skimmed. I know that Chapel Rowan's album is out and Doja Cat's album is out, but I have been heavily involved in kylie and slater Mm -hmm. i will get to them i've seen a ton of praise on the discord yeah i really like agora hills the song oh agora hills yes i'm still diving into the album yes and chapel i people are going nuts about that one and that is one i need to deep dive into i promise i feel people yelling at me but there's a ton of good stuff people are eating you know yom kippur is coming up this evening and uh i feel well fed (laughs) uh by all of the serving from the, from the ladies, <laughs> so that's good. Um, it'll get the get me through the fast real easy. I this was one of those weeks where everyone was happy on the Discord. I felt like like oh. everyone had um, food to eat. Gotcha. Yeah, I have some comments about Doja though. Okay, the cover with oh, the, spiders, the spiders obsessed. Even yes. though it's like horrifying, right? 
but like and there was like drama with like the original cover looking yeah they changed it right yeah I think it's very memorable I like it also the campaign that they did with the wax figures Scar- was it Scarlet was the name or- maybe yeah 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 um, the Doja figurines that they made, the life-size Dojas that they put out as like photo opportunities. I'm just wondering the the album's called Scarlet. I'm just wondering if like the the Dojas, the the, the figures were like called Scarlet. Oh, I, I don't know if there's lore. I, I might be missing lore. I think there's lore to it, but I saw some people posting photos with it this week, mm-hmm. and I'm like, this is brilliant. Yes, it. I mean. It, Probably is a 3D scan of her. Right. But it's so cool. Her Madame Tussauds around the the globe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I also wanted to shout out the Olivia Rodrigo interactive booth Q&As. Did you see that? Yes. You're right. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. It was giving like what a mall tour would be in 2023. And I was like, this is really fucking smart. Yeah. Why don't you tell people? I don't, I doubt a lot of people saw it, but. Okay, the concept, so the concept of a Q and A. So a Q and A is like you ask questions and answers. The Q is for question, A is for answer. Okay, following <laughs> <Yeah>. so far. <laughs> um, so well, we've talked in the past about how I feel like superstars don't. It, it's harder to become a superstar now because back in the day, you used to like really have to put in the work and like travel the malls and do the local circuits and local radio, and it just media is different now, right? Yeah. So Olivia Rodrigo, massive star. Obviously, she's not going to be able to hit every mall around America. One, for like logistical reasons. Like, you know, you can't be in a million places at once. Yeah. And also safety reasons. Mm -hmm. I would be scared. Yeah, I'm scared most places. Yeah. Yeah. So they built these boxes where she was in a studio. I don't know where. And it broadcasted a screen. So it looked like she was sitting inside this box. Mm -hmm. And then you could walk up to the box and in the microphone be like hey olivia like what's your favorite song on this album and it's streaming to her live so she's responding in real time and it looks like she's there yeah. in the mall so she's able to interact with more people like then you can just like call in to all these different places kind yeah. of like a radio yeah like a zoom yeah it's like a, ra- yeah. like a it's like a modern radio tour mm-hmm. with a visual like you could get a photo with her even though it's just a box yeah but I don't know. I thought it was really cool. It is. It tackles some of the modern issues, but also with modern solutions. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that's cool. Yeah. She's having a hell of a week. She's she's continuing to slay with the charts and, and things of that nature. Yeah. She's doing just fine. She's doing just fine. There's like think pieces and apologies in advance from Ticketmaster. They're doing something insane with the tickets for her tour. I think I heard, I, I grazed this topic like, that they're only allowing them to like go on sale like 72 hours before the show or something nuts. Like there's something crazy happening. Hmm. I feel terrible for all involved because it will be a bloodbath. Do I hate that idea? I I don't know. I As someone who personally buys tickets usually like 72 hours before shows now after my trauma from Chromatica Ball, I don't hate that. Oh wait. Okay, the exact thing is that the the verified fan presale for the tour Tickets purchased for the Guts tour will not be available until 72 hours prior to the date of the show and can only be accessed electronically to curtail resale prices for the show. So basically, like, resale can't happen until, like, right at the last minute. I don't know if that would make it any better, though. I could see it discouraging resellers. Right. I know they're trying. I know it's hard. Everyone swoops in, the scammers, they buy it. They sell it immediately for 2000 on StubHub and everything. It is a problem. Yeah. It's a hard thing to... And nobody's figured it out. I mean, obviously, the Eras Tour has been super successful, but we have almost are immediately forgot like the absolute meltdowns that led up to it. So I don't think anybody's really slayed it. No. Of that size of demand in a way that people were satisfied. There will be tears, especially this one. As somebody tweeted, like, 25 and older, go see Pink or Kelly Clarkson. This girl's for us. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> facts. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to like brainstorm on here and give out free ideas, but like. And then part of it is the spectacle of it all. Like, it looks good that, I mean, it doesn't look good, but it's like, wow, Taylor Swift shut down Ticketmaster. Wow, Olivia Rodrigo's causing rule changes to verified sales. It It's like a PR thing in a way. It looks good good sort of yeah it's epic yeah but at the same time then it 
does the reselling screws fans yeah. like uh, someone who is an actual diehard fan yeah that's in their bedroom streaming everything mm-hmm. and can't afford a 500 dollar nosebleed seat yeah like that fan should be allowed to go and sit front row yeah. like there has to be a way to like you should have to do a quiz yeah and prove your fandom right like i was in the nosebleeds for beyonce where i belonged right <laughs> like i'm a late beehive member I should not be allowed to be taking a a diehard fan's spot, I think. Right. But, like, if you can't name all of Christina Aguilera's fragrances, you should be in the back. Well, she needs to book a stadium (laughs) first. (laughs) In any case, I do think think there's some room for improvement in the system. But (laughs) speaking of, actually, speaking of new music. Yeah, some kind of, like... I don't know. Like, well, the pit that you did with Madonna when he like Golden walked triangle. around and was like, oh, I love your, like, you're coming here. Like, yes, that is something like that. That's true. Who's at my door? Oh, speaking of <laughs> Gaio <Steve> Siri. <laughs> yeah. Congrats. You got Golden Triangle. <laughs> yes. I can wish. Anyway. Well, we've got some new music that has come out. There are some of note that we had to, to shout out before we get into the main event including, speaking of, Christina Aguilera, Paw Patrol soundtrack song. What is Paw Patrol even about? Um, It's cop dogs, I think. <sighs> A-cab. A- all, all cop <laughs> dogs are bad. <laughs> <laughs> did you see that new fucking robot they're rolling out in New York? I did. It's like C-3PO or something. It yeah. looks like, I can't. Is he single? <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, he's like a huge like little robot that like is going to patrol... The stations. I'm like, oh, okay. I always feel, um, I, I, I think the ones in the supermarket have an attitude. The ones with the googly eyes. Have you seen those? That those I skinny saw little the, um, the TikTok of the girl, yeah, like being like <laughs> confronting. What's your yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think they have an attitude, and I think they need to be taken down a peg. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they think they own that place. They're know. going to one day. Yeah, they will. Yeah, we're gonna be serving them at some point. We will. There will be a battle for uh, AI civil rights Mm -hmm. for sure yeah anyway (laughs) anyway that was an experimental record that that will surpass time yes learning to fly not to be confused with the name of victoria beckham's book (laughs) many people were confused about that um christina has the soundtrack song it's uh inspirational motivational getting her a check i don't even know if she promoted it no Maybe it wasn't I in the wouldn't deal. if I was her either. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, sometimes we do things so that our kids hear our voices on soundtracks of kids' movies. And that's what this is. Yeah, it is. She said, my kids love Paw Patrol, so I'm just going to scream on the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's available. It's fine. It's no um, The Hunger Games song. Oh. We Remain. Yes. Bop. But it's fine. It's, it's her ooh la la. That's generous. Yeah, that is generous, actually. <laughs> <laughs> la la is a bop. It's there. Yeah. I don't think anybody was anticipating it or, or expecting it to be anything. No. It, it, yes. It's no broken and beautiful. No. Did you see that TikTok of Kelly Clarkson in Vegas? Yeah. Outside? Yeah. yeah. That'll be, oh, that's our TikTok talk. Oh, yeah. TikTok talk. Uh, as you were... Offline, you yeah, did I not, was off the TikTok. But we did see Kelly Clarkson outside mm-hmm. Vegas, and did you see Hoda reacting to Kelly doing warm ups? Yeah, uh, and she went shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kelly's having a good week again. She released again another thing that we have to get to Deluxe Chemistry featuring River Rose. <laughs> That's out. She did a live that I checked into briefly. I and I heard her. I clicked in, and she goes. Brazil loves me. (laughs) (laughs) I wonder if she gets it. Uh, Probably. I well, I think like all pop stars know that Brazil loves them, but they don't necessarily know that that's like a like they don't know RT for Brazil. Yeah, yeah. But Brazil loves Kelly, and uh, we also have a new song by what I keep seeing gays refer to him as the Madonna of Twinks. (laughs) That's a compliment. It is a compliment. Troy Sivan. Speaking of Australian excellence, this week, new song, Got Me Started. She's starting. Featuring a sample of Bag Raiders, 
which is their first time, I believe, officially approving that song to be sampled. And they've had many offers, apparently. And then they finally allowed Troy, which, you know. I think it's well done. I think it's well done. It's a bop. Some people think it's jarring, the how it comes in oh. after the chorus, but I like it. The video, we are, Troy is dancing, inspired by Janet, apparently. He also referenced Demita Joe as one of his influences. <gasps> 20 know. years incoming. Mm-hmm. Everyone manifests that my remix gets something, I don't know. Oh, yes, manifest. 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 Prayer circle. But, yeah. And I can I can actually hear that somewhat. And then in the dance moves, of course, he's clearly going for it. Kind of a continuation of the Rush movements. This era is very elevated yeah. from him. Yeah. Like the past eras were good. Mm-hmm. And this is like... I, he's really going for pop star. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to My My My. Oh. Oh, fucking Bob. Yeah. But I'm really enjoying this era and got me started as a bop as well. Got you started. It got me started. Is there a new album coming from him? Yes, it's called... It's soon, too, I believe. On October 13th, his third album, Something to Give Each Other. Ooh. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Careful what you give. (laughs) (laughs) Careful about that. I feel the rush. Ooh, I feel the burn. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, Sorry, this is inappropriate. I thought this was a classy party. That happens. Um, (laughs) I've never had an STD. Must be nice. <laughs> I <laughs> Stay safe out there, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> you might get one if you're a star fucker, which brings us to our next topic. Miss Slater is finally here. We've been talking about this rollout for a while now with Starfucker. And she also released like a visualizer for every song. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's making Third it Third album, right? Second. S-L-Y-Y-Y-2. <laughs> yeah. And then Troubled Paradise was her, like, uh, on, on the clouds. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, this is very addictive, this this album. It's giving, for people who didn't dive into Slater at all, the reference points. And I got some people to listen because of the references I, I posted on my story. And I'm like, if you like Paris, Britney Blackout, Marina Electra Heart, Kim, Turn Off the Light. Boo Bitch. Boo Bitch. Um, even a little bit of Justice slash um, Daft Punk. It's all there. It's all sort of in that sort of genre. It's dark, slutty, electropop, the, and thematically, vaguely, like the glamour and downfall of fame, TMZ culture, drugs, Miss Purr. Mm-hmm. That <laughs> Purr is something. It also reminds me of Amanda Bla- Blank, if, if anybody knows Amanda Blank. Uh, it reminds me of her a little bit too, and uh, yeah, before the album even dropped, like it was every single was killing it for me, so I'm not surprised. So maybe we could just go through it real quick. I took notes on this one. Oh, well, I saw there was a request for a track by track, so I was like, oh. I can give notes. Okay, per track. I love Hollywood. I wrote that. It sounds like there's like a chain used in the production for mm-hmm. part of the beat, which gives me like piece of me. There's like oh. a, I don't know if that's intentional or not, but this one really reminds me of Boo Bitch okay. by Kim Petras. The voiceovers the album. are hilarious. Yeah. Like, I don't do, I don't do drugs. You're literally doing coke right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I feel like this album, what did I write? Oh, I said, I love that the structures of the song are very complex. Mm. And it's not just like your typical pre-chorus drop, pre-chorus drop, Mm -hmm. which like a lot of the EDM I feel has been. Reminds me of the Why Troubled Paradise is so good, that song. Yeah, it's like very rich and and there's like intricate details in every single track that I really like. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Miss Belladonna. Fucking Bob. Yeah, we we had that already. It goes (laughs) off. I wrote, shout out to Carmen Rasmussen, her vibrato impact. (laughs) Oh my I god. I still every time I hear like a Fuck. vibrato, I think of Carmen Rasmussen. The girls that That's get what it get everybody's it. Everybody's thinking. Right? Miss Belladonna is also one that reminds me, I forgot as far as the references, Fame Monster Gaga. Like mm-hmm. early fame Gaga comes to mind. Um Dramatic. Catchy. Catchy. And My Body. That was the one that landed on my release radar. Ugh. The bridge. 
Mm. And I wrote, I absolutely love the synth sounds and the impacts, the effects. We're getting technical here, everyone. Oh, I can't listen to music in peace I, anymore. You can't. I, really I knew can't. that. I knew that. Every little detail of this. Yeah. This is one of those albums, like, remember back in the day when Stan Twitter, you would, like, try to defend your fave by being like, this isn't bad. You just need to listen with headphones. Yeah. Maybe it'll grow on y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this album, though. Yeah. You need to do, like, the two headphones, because it, like... There's a lot. Yeah. Very maximalist pop, I feel. Yeah. Memories of You, not to be confused with the Girls Aloud song, Memory of You. <laughs> What'd you think about that? I like this one. I liked my body better. Mm -hmm. Memories of You wasn't a standout, yeah. but I do like it. Well, the next one, a reference I didn't mention either, Rhinestone Heart. This, Ava Max has daughters. Oh. And Slater is one. <laughs> officially rhinestone heart is giving me diamonds and dance floors for sure yeah like, i also wrote um the bass line mm -hmm. reminds me of a duo track which oh. is a compliment yes erotic electronic this is slut strut on the street this is so good for doing that i still think this is my favorite yeah it's there's a close second but yeah this one this one if you're pre-gaming ladies like before you go out, like you'll feel it gives you like a punch. There's like a, a Cavanti punch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like slaps you in the tit. Yes. You know? Yes. Going but out, gals. Doesn't slap you as hard as the next one, which is purr. Ugh. Drugs make my kitty go purr. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one again would uh kill a Victorian child. Um this one <laughs> The gasps. This, this one was yeah, very pearl clutch. Mm-hmm. The production on this is really good. Yeah, can't relate to the themes of this song, but it goes off. It's yeah. It reminds me of Aisha Electronica. Yes. That sort of like yes, sex, drugs, punchy, rock bitey. and roll. Yeah. Yes. And then plastic. Oh my god, obsessed with this mm -hmm. one too. Mm -hmm. I like want to. Can we play a little bit for the girls? Oh, I don't know. Don't take me to jail, Slater. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to clip it for the soundboard, but I was like, I don't want to get hit with a copyright strike, Not you know, again. but like, I feel it when we play it out of our phones, it gives like a graininess to it. that yeah. It doesn't really like. <laughs> like, it's so cat brand new tits. <laughs> it screams Give you. Me a little injection. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and yeah. that actually reminds me of a little bit of the first out like throat zilla like the more explicit version yeah of her yeah not that this isn't all explicit i appreciate the explicitness yes somebody's got to do it <laughs> girl like me i think you said this was the one that was your gateway from release radar yeah my release radar yeah. did pick up a slater track thank you i don't know if thank us you complaining about release AI radar bot. two weeks ago yeah. helped yeah or if the fact that i didn't listen to any edm all week oh that probably helped <laughs> but too. like this one did pop up. It's so dreamy. Like the synths throughout this whole album are like mm -hmm. that nostalgic dreaminess. Yeah. The contrast of like the explicit lyrics and the bitiness and the punchiness of the beats. Yeah. Shout out to the producer, Nico Pop, who did <gasps> oh, quite a few of them. I'm going to have to follow and mm -hmm. study the work because study, study I'm work. very impressed and inspired. And the next one, uh, Tear Me Open, which... Be careful with that. Let me tell you. Don't want to do that. No. That's a slow heel. <laughs> <laughs> I like that this one has sort of like a, it slows it down a little bit, but it's mm. still cohesive. Yeah. We're getting to the end, which we had this song already out of time. I, I still, I love out of time. Same. It's, I would have swapped the, because I'm, what is it the word that you use to describe the, is it sequencing? Sequencing. I would have swapped this with, tear me down yeah but like do the girls even care about sequencing anymore like is that I a do. thing of the past i don't know if the people do in general but i do i definitely care yeah because i will say that's one of my critiques actually uh, uh, to a degree about tension but we'll get into it in a second <gasps> oh, okay. oh my god i feel better because that was gonna be my one of my critiques yeah. too okay okay but yeah because i thought like it, tear me down is like a nice come down yeah and then it, it picks back up with out of time and i'm like uh, mm -hmm. you know totally but all in all, and considering the fact that obviously she's very low budge promo, like this is not big bucks like marketing campaign or anything. But it fits. But it fits and it feels rich, this album. It feels very well done for, you know, being 
somebody who isn't on a major right like budget production so i think it's stupendous it's giving like edgy (laughs) sophisticated like it's giving prostitute vibes in like a cavant way. And I like, you know me, Yeah, that is a compliment. Like yeah. it reminds me of like Grand Theft Auto. GTA, exactly. I wrote like, this is, if I had a fucking car, yeah. I would be driving in this rain right. to this album. It's Hustlers. Yes. It's Spring Breakers. It's, I don't know. There's all these sorts of like things that come bra, to mind. A pop-up bra with my tits out and yeah, like Yeah, well, coat. of course that's all up her alley. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. So in like that, a vintage car mm-hmm. and you're like driving around being a little, you know, hey boys, <laughs> beep beep, ah! You, but it has like that, it, there's like a low budgetness. Yep. But extreme level of cavunt. Uh-huh. And I feel like that's what she's going for. Totally. So it's high praise. I'm not, I'm not trying yeah. to sound like I'm calling had, a woman, you know what I mean? Yes. I had girls issues with Troubled Paradise. I thought it was a little all over the place. And I feel like Starfucker is like, oh, you have your sound now. You have yes. your vision. You have your aesthetic. Mm-hmm. And it's what I saw in mine and the mixtape. And it's fully realized, I think, here much better. Yeah. Yeah. The visuals, the yes. sound, yes. the attitude, the tweets, like all of it across the board. Yes. Like even the way she's tweeting about the album. Yes. My husband is dead. Like yeah. click this for my pussy or whatever. Yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, it also, yeah, it reminds me of that kind of like, internet i don't like i don't even know what i'm going for like retroness mm-hmm. of yeah she just like broke the rules and just like went for it yeah it's, it's high all, praise high praise for sl y y y two <laughs> yeah yeah oh, i want to drive in a car and blast this <laughs> my tits out then listen to the yeah in the back seat <laughs> literally though uh, <laughs> uh, those are the days i know it reminds me of literally grand theft auto mm. but i want to be the hooker in the car Yes. You know what I mean? Oh, I know what you mean. Uh, yeah. Used to be young. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, congratulations, Slater, for a great, great album. I know the girls are definitely loving it in the Discord. Yeah. And of course, we have Miss Kylie Minogue with Tension. Might have mentioned it once or twice before. I don't know. It's finally here in all of its glory, and you got to hear it for the first time in a club setting, which is pretty cool. I did. Okay, so some of the girls gave me shit. Oh. And I was like... You were in a beach <laughs> with no service. Well, no, but I also intentionally didn't listen to it. Oh. Because when you told the story about the listening party, oh. where you were like, oh, it was phones off, and yeah. you were hearing the album for the first time in a club setting. Yeah. So it was cool to see like how people reacted, and what was catchy, and what caught on. Yeah. And then how you talk to her after and you're like, oh, this one, this one, yeah, blah, yeah. blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, that sounds so fun. Yeah. I was like, I want to do that. Right. Like, so I was like, I'm not listening to this and I'm going to listen to it at the party. Yeah. Yeah. So people were like, oh, you didn't listen. Oh my God. I was like, oh. you know what I mean? Like, I didn't want my first listen to be like in a car with like family, you know? Everyone like turning their volumes down <laughs> as you say that, right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> no, <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah. No, definitely not on a family trip. No, like not that this is Starfucker, but it's still no. Just after like, like six hours, extreme on the road, amounts I'm of like... f word. It's yeah. just okay. No, I get it. Well, you did get so your your first reactions will be from the club, which yeah. is very exciting. Yes, I had the pleasure of going to the listening party and listening to it with her and seeing those reactions, and then uh, seeing it last night and seeing what people responded to. And then my own thoughts. So why don't we dive in? There's this opening track called um, Padam Padam. I haven't heard this one haven't yet. heard this one. It seems like it could be catchy. I mean, the thing about it is as much as I was over the memes and stuff, like when John, DJ John Ali, like stopped talking and it dropped, the panic that it ensued is just The like, screaming, the gay scream. It really does give you that oomph every time. Yeah. It just, it just is that girl. So- a brilliant way to start the album. There's no other way, I think. Like, that's no. you just go right in. However, we'll talk about the sequencing later. Then we go into Hold On to Now. Fucking, oh my God. Bop. Bop, 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 bop. Emotion. Emotion. Synths. Synths. Dance. Dance. Serve. Serve. Possibly the best song in the album. 
it's so the funny thing is what during the listening party it did nothing for me and i couldn't really hear it not that i didn't like it but i was just like cool up tempo got it but right. I, di- I didn't connect it all i didn't hear the lyrics really i was just like okay um the melody definitely i like the beat but do you hear that that <laughs> melody <laughs> <laughs> But when I heard it for the first time in high quality, I actually got choked up because this is Kylie giving existential, very Robin vibes, very happy, sad, very, I don't really know why we're here. Let's just keep on holding on for the moment. Like, ooh, that's exactly, I think it hits for a lot of people Yeah, in this time. It's very relatable. Yes. It feels very dramatic and beautiful. And so, and I think... People really went off to it last night as well. Sequence-wise, I'm not sure it should be number two. No. I shouldn't be crying already. No. I think it would have been beautiful either... Three quarters of the way in. Three quarters of the way in or directly before story or after story. Yeah. We we got a little too fast with that. It, like, hold on to that, literally. Yeah. I have no shame admitting that... Well, I saw you post it on your story as like a standout yes so i was like okay i'll listen to this i cheated a little yeah, yeah, yeah. i listened to it while i was on my trip yeah i cried yeah i was literally staring out the the big open sea and i was like i'm literally holding on to now yeah it's it touches the moment it's, yeah it's meets the moment i was feeling like oh i wish there was a song like the one on on aphrodite this is the closest it's that sort of like dreamy vibe i think the closest to that sort of song that kind of takes you to a place like that that's where i'm I'm at with that one this is my the one of the album i feel it's just the i think one. the one i i do everyone was asking me last night like oh what's what's your favorite of the new ones and i think it's definitely this yeah. one. yeah but so i've heard rumors and rumblings that that the video's on the way that this will be a single oh this needs to be a single yeah kylie if you're listening yeah which i and i also to that point think and i had heard there were rumblings that they were trying to lead with this or do it single two i think they did it exactly right padam should obviously have started and then tension keeps the vibe going yeah this is where you get to be a little different you single three you could get a little more emotional or weird and i think that's perfect for this i think they've done that perfectly right i don't think i actually don't know how the campaign would have gone if they led with hold on to now i don't think people would have gotten it that well that's it's for the gays but i don't think and I don't think it'll really do anything as single three, but maybe. I, at this point, anything's gravy. She could do a really powerful video with this. She could. Like, it's like the whole, it unites the whole world, you know? Mm. Like, we're all just holding on to now. It's the all the lovers, but like, it's even bigger mountain of people. <gasps> Literally. Yes. You never know. And But then case, we hold on to each other yeah. while we're all holding on to now. Yes. That's a concept. Get it? It's a concept. Well, we we move like, right you along. You know, she could be like helping people up, uh huh, and like holding. <laughs> <laughs> I was cl- I was hiking, so I have like inspiration. Yeah, you were definitely holding on. Yeah, yeah. And then we start having fun again. We actually start getting okay for an album that was pretty modern. Padam into tension was very like sleek, two minute TikTok a bowl pop. We do get some like surprisingly eighties moments. Mm-hmm. So that's where that starts, I think, here with like things we do for love, which is funny because it's somebody said this to me last night. Like it's a form of 80s pop that she didn't really do herself. It sounds like 80s, but she didn't really sound like this in the 80s, which is interesting. But it's it's good. It's it also reminds me of Carly Rae Jepsen's Mm -hmm. 80s referencing. And she is a daughter of Kylie. So it's kind of all like lumped into one thing. So that's like a cute. A lot of people actually like this one, too. They're said it was very cute so it's cute it is cute uh tension album title track next i mean we we spoke about it when it came out this hit this hit live yeah i mean like i knew the song but like when you hear that first eight count it's like oh she's starting yeah the oh my god touched me right there in a in a club Mm -hmm. people go feral like they they were acting up that was really good that that went down really well live i really enjoy the next one which is one more time this is a very catchy, like one more time. One, I, I feel like it also was very joyous in yeah at the club. By the second chorus, I as not hearing it. Oh right, right, right. I was singing it. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, Bob, one it's catchy. More time. Yeah. I'm singing the song. I've never heard it until right now. Yeah. That's a sign. 
of a bop. Yeah, I enjoy that a lot. And then we move into You Still Get Me High, which somebody said uh, to me that they kind of, it kind of reminds them of Bleachers, which is Jack Antonoff's project. You kind of see that. Uh, I should also mention all of these are like her constant team of like John Green, Duck Blackwell, and Biff. And Biff is the legend who's done every, Love at First Sight and everything with her since. And she's worked tightly with this crew since like Golden and Ten- or Disco and all of that. So You Still Get Me High is like, again, sort of reaching into that 80s. Mm-hmm. like retro vibe i would say i like how this one builds up yeah and then has the saxophone the sax yeah, yeah. the sax in this one mm-hmm. yeah that's the part that's like the conflict of tension because i thought it was going to be all padam so i was like oh we're doing a little retro moment yeah a little brass a little moment ret- saying a little yeah the next one i love as a throwback for me uh to a time of body language this is hands the rapping kills me i'm obsessed she also purposely left the demo singer in the opening. Oh, she said it too in the in the which not every girl does. Uh, but it's clearly not her. Well, some have them sing the whole album. Exactly. <laughs> but it, in her in her Apple interview, it's she said, you know, we had the demo singer part there, and then I come in. This is giving me body language, and as we know, that was her more R and B sort of leaning or experimenting and in, in groove like that, and. It reminds me of Secret Take You Home, for those who know who know. It's playful. <laughs> Your face. Definitely thought it was fun. Beat, <laughs> yeah. So, not my one of, uh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, it's sassy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next one at the listening party, she cautioned us and she was like, oh, you know, this one's probably like a bit of an intermission in the album. And then she played it. She spelled. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is green light. She played it, but then it was more up than I think she thought because people were still dancing. She's like, you know, I said it was sort of like the slow song, but I actually, in retrospect, and she said that in the Apple Music interview too. She was like, I, I went to the New York party and I told them this was like the slow one. And she was like, oh, it, but yeah, it's still, it's not like a high height. Yeah. I also like the saxophone in this one. Yeah. But I wish they like did something to it mm. to make it feel a little sound a little different yeah i don't know how to yeah. describe that feeling how do i describe a feeling i've only ever dreamt of okay sorry this was a reference <laughs> what was a reference um the next one okay vegas high oh i have a production compliment oh the beginning there's a sound mm-hmm. that sounds like a drink being stirred it almost sounds like ice in a drink yeah and I don't know if that was intentional or not, Ooh. but I thought of a martini glass and someone like stirring or like a whatever glass, someone like stirring a little drink. Yeah. And I was like, ooh, uh, Vegas. Vegas high. This song has no business being this good. Right. For this, being a Vegas promo song. She very explicitly, again, like she's very honest about this whole album. She said, I had the assignment. I'm going to Vegas. We said, let's do a Vegas song. This song really goes off. Like, I love this one. This is a highlight for me. Yeah, this is a good one. And I think the funniest thing about it is nothing in Vegas feels as good as this song. If sh- This song does not sound like my Vegas experience. Well, you were... I was not <laughs> mentally there in 2013, but this sounds so joyous and warm and big. And then you get there, <laughs> and every Sally Sue from the Midwest visiting, like fighting you to get to the tickets to oh the- i had a blast i don't know i, I feel had a blast. like i well i mean i oh yeah spoiler because i didn't tell anyone i actually am going to vegas now so i'm excited <gasps> to have this vegas high but just i this song was very surprising to me in a good way it it's just it's so pure pop and big and it's just funny that it's about vegas i feel like the i mean i haven't been to vegas in a long time but the scene feels different yeah Maybe so. Yeah. 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 But Britney's love it. impact, I said it. And I also feel like in retrospect, looking at the tension art and stuff, like it's kind of deserty. It's like uh, outer space, but it's kind of the desert. And the lyrics are like chasing the diamonds into the losing track of time. I think it's all centered around Vegas, really. Like kind of. Also, shout out to DJ John Lee. He's gonna be so pissed that I called this out when the album dropped and we were he was giving me first impressions. He texted me <laughs> the line, chasing Madonna 
into the night and I was like, it's chasing the diamond. <laughs> Wait, he thought it said Madonna? Chasing Madonna. Oh. I mean, that is an yeah. iconic lyric. Chasing Madonna. <laughs> right? I misheard one of the lyrics in um, Hold On To Now for uh-huh. 24 hours. Okay. Yeah, I thought she was saying dance in the river. And I was like staring out into the ocean. I was oh. like, oh my God, the yeah. river. But it's uh, dancing forever. Oh. So, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. It happens. Happens. Well, then we move on to a song that came out already. 10 out of 10. Which, I'm sorry. Hey. <laughs> hey. I am now going to be a 10 out of 10 defender. I think it works in the concept, in the mix of this song, album. What am I trying to say? It works in the context of this album. And it was fun live. Yeah, I had a thought on the dance floor that I kept to myself because I was not trying to ruin anyone's moment. Uh But I literally was like, oh my God, this is her pretty girls. Oh my God, that's offensive. It's so bad, (laughs) but I know every word and it's a bop and it's going on. I don't think it's nearly that bad, (laughs) but I am into it. I was like, oh wait, this kind of goes off. It does. (laughs) Buddy, 10. Everyone gets into it. I think it's a fun time. And I think it really, really works as a whole with this album. It's fine. It fits in. It's not like jarringly different. No. And then we move on to story, which I enjoy this one. Yes, that was the first listen for you of this one, I think. And you told me you liked this one, mm-hmm. which she would be glad to hear. This is one of the ones um, that is personal to her. Kylie keeps her cards close to her chest. She isn't really, you know, for all the talk of like something more personal albums and stuff and interviews. She's really never given you a lot of dirt and a lot of tea about gossip yeah but in this song she references some things vaguely the dark things something happened in her personal life and she said in the apple music interview that she went through some stuff privately and this it's a dedication to the people who are a part of her story who were with her through all thick and thin and that sort of thing and so we don't have an idea of really what she's talking about if it's like relationship or health or whatever but this is like as close as Kylie's getting to something more personal on the album. And I appreciate it a lot more knowing that about the song. And I liked the song already. Does she have a memoir? She does not yet. Because that could be one of the chapters. Yes. The story. The story. <gasps> the book could just you be called I mean? Story. Yeah. Mm, it's right there. Look at that. We are due that memoir. I don't know if she ever will, though. She she's had some interviews re- recently where she's talked about how she's been always able to balance. I don't think it's time yet. Maybe not, but because like I would love to hear. She has her to wait insight. until residency happens. At yeah. Least. yeah, and like the how Padam took off. Yeah, like, I would like for things to settle down before we get. Yeah, you know, but that could be, and it is a wonderful closer for the standard edition of the album. Oh, that's the end of the. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a tight little album. But then the three next tracks are the deluxe until the inevitable repack. And uh, because she does 5 million things with disco, I'm sure she'll do this again. Um, But we we move into one of the silliest songs, Love Train. Yeah, this one was not for me. She references Mario in the beginning. It's a silly one. It's not my favorite either. It reminds me of uh, the wine song from disco. I forget what it's called now. She had a silly moment. The next one, though, just imagine this chorus. I had to double check the writing credits. I thought that was Sia. Like, it sounds like it's a very Sia chorus. Like, I just think it's very thunderous and like dramatic. Reminds me of like something that Sia would write. Compliment. And this is also, this was the slowest moment of the dance floor moments, Mm -hmm. but it does have a little pulse by the second verse, I noticed. I think it's very pretty. And finally, somebody to love, which is, I think, the most liked of the bonus tracks. And it kind of reminds me of Carly Rae Jepsen, which is to say it reminds me of Kylie Minogue, and it's a vicious circle in my mind. I enjoyed this one live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That brings us to the end of Tension. Another Kylie record down. All in all, I'm really happy with it. I've seen negative. I've seen overly positive. I think it's a great record. I enjoy it a lot. I think the highs are really high on this album. Like, Padam and Tension, Vegas High, shockingly. Like, they're going to stand out for me 
um, maybe maybe more than like the highest highs of disco. I think, I think she at least captured the public's attention really well in this album, and especially in America. Yeah, yeah, she achieved some things that were really unthinkable. Very proud of her, killing it thirty-five plus whatever years in the industry, and just making like what a joy to have a pop star who just makes pop records, just chucks them out like regularly she's album 16 she'll have more i think she confirmed in a tour 17 or 18 are coming 2024 tour is coming like ah, she's just such a pleasant lovely fantastic pop star because she just loves doing pop and there's no drama there's no drama it's like here's disco right here's tension yeah and now that she's seen the response i feel like she's gonna lean in even harder she's gonna do this sort of like light years fever modern padam tension vibes even more which i i welcome and this was her kind of like baby tiptoeing back into the mainstream because she had done concept records for almost a decade christmas album her joanne golden and disco which is really just a themed record this was really her first time being like i'm just gonna do what sounds fresh so i think it was very successful in that way and obviously i'm incredibly biased that's that's my thoughts on tension it really was a song of the summer. Yeah. Like in gay worlds. Absolutely. Back. It, it it like introduced a term. It's like a term of endearment. Yeah. It, totally. I think my only critique with the album is I felt like the sound was kind of the same mm. throughout. Yeah. Like I wish they like kind of pushed the envelope in certain areas. Yeah. But it is cohesive and the sequencing is weird. Yeah. But I agree. like overall. I agree with you. I yeah. I Overall, have my, the vision and the sound is cohesive. Totally. I have my critiques, but otherwise, I'm pretty much pleased. And you know, I always want them to go more experimental, more electronic, whatever. What would it be like if Kylie has sounded like the the mid air by? It's not Romy though. How do you say it? John Rami. 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 Rami like Tommy. Rami like Someone Tommy. Someone said that in Discord. I'm yeah. like, okay. Midair by Rami, which I'm still playing all the time. Like if she had really kind of taken it to a more experimental or whatever level. But I would like her to branch out a little bit in that category. She's been keeping it lean with this team that she's done. Like put um who, what was the name? Nico Pop from yeah. Slater's album with yeah. Kylie. Honestly. Mm-hmm. I would like some some more players in the kitchen. It's kind of the same critique we had about Kelly recently, mm. where we were like, let's experiment a little, let's push the envelope, get yeah. a little weird. Yeah. A fabulous release week, a fabulous album campaign, and and we had a fabulous party, which we will discuss. In the after show. That's right. Well, we're back in action now, and we'll be more, um, well, I don't know. <laughs> we can't make too many promises, but we're going to be more in tune with pop culture, I guess, now that we're back from vacation mode yeah i'm already back in it my yeah. screen time has already skyrocketed back up oh how lovely and i'm like oh here we go again yeah well if you'd like to keep keep the good times coming yeah the conversation continues <laughs> over on the after show shout out to all of our supporters over on patreon.com slash legends only he, he. For just $5 a month, or if you'd like to be an icon at $10 a month, we give bonus episodes. There is an after show after every main episode, as well as some fun, experimental, ahead of their time concept episodes every now and then over on our Patreon that you can also connect to Spotify now and listen there. We also have the Discord where you can engage with very lively conversations and emojis and yes. discussions daily nonstop, it's always on Mm -hmm. and um yeah until next week though we will who is uh (laughs) anyone dropping anything next week it's october next week isn't it uh yeah oh my fucking god i don't think anyone's next week album wise maybe not but we do have a live chat oh yes there is a live chat on thursday yes thursday at eight o'clock which i will even if I have to have oral surgery this week, I will <laughs> try to get through it. If, if I can't talk, I will type. That'll be our best live chat. Oh my God. <laughs> if I'm like, my face is swollen, whatever. We'll see what happens. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, until next week, we will see you.
then. <laughs> Bye. Bye.